Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back and in today's video we're going to be continuing work on our $2,000 G35 sedan drift build. If you guys didn't see it in the last video, which I'll link to right here, we went ahead and found the car we were going to purchase, got the car, figured out everything we thought was wrong with the car, um, pulled off the catalytic converters to get those sold, pulled out the differential to get that welded up, and did a little bit of body work on the rear end where the car was crashed. In today's video, we're gonna be installing all the parts we got last time in order to fix the car, that being a new power steering pump, a new rear hub and wheel bearing, as well as two new axles. We are also gonna be installing our welded differential, installing our cat delete pipes, as well as our rear adjustable suspension arms and our steering angle kit. So we're gonna be starting out with the boring stuff. I'm gonna do the new power steering pump as well as the new cat delete pipes. So whenever I talk about a part that we bought for the car, I'm gonna tell you guys how much I paid for it. And at the end of the build in the last episode, before we go shake the car down, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about all the parts we sold off the car and then the net price that that got us for the total cost of the build. So taking a look at our new power steering pump, I paid $30 for this. So we were able to pull out the old power steering pump, which we have right here and we are now going to throw in our new power steering pump right here. It wasn't too much trouble to get out at all. We did make a little mess, but we'll clean it up after. Um, I did end up pulling the fan shroud off and I noticed we actually do have like a newer radiator here. It looks like a part store replacement. It does look like it's pretty new. So I think we lucked out on that one as long as they didn't replace the radiator because they were having overheating problems because the engine has a blown head gasket. But I did spill a bunch of coolant too and it didn't look like there was oil in it. So I think we're good. I think we lucked out. So. Gonna go ahead and throw in the new pump right now and should be good. So we got the new pump on now. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw our belt back on and top it up with power steering fluid. I think it's ATF for this thing. I'm gonna check, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And before we throw the radiator shred back on and refill the coolant that we lost from removing this hose, and before we um, go ahead and bolt everything else down, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car on, make sure the power steering works. And then we can go ahead and throw everything else back together. We got the fluid filled up a little bit. It's probably gonna suck that all down when we turn the car on. So we're just gonna give the car a quick fire up and see how it does. There's no exhaust on it, so this will be funny. Very loud, we do have power steering now, which is awesome. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the radiator shred back in, then go ahead and install our cat delete pipes. So I did end up pulling the catalytic converters off the car to get those sold. So we are gonna have to do something to replace them, that being install some test pipes. That is what we have right here. These were 80 bucks and they are going to replace the catalytic converters. So here they are right here. These are actually the exact same test pipes I am running on my VQ240, so they're pretty cool. Granted, on my uh, 240, I did actually have to cut them and kind of change the angle of them to fit in the S13 chassis. However, putting these into the G35 should be a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We are gonna go ahead and throw the factory O2 sensors into our test pipes. Um, I think all they're going to do is produce a check engine light for us because it's going to see there's no catalytic converters. However, uh, this doesn't really matter. I think we can do like a spacer or something that goes into here that kind of separates it out so we don't get a check engine light. But um, for right now, we're building pretty much a strictly track car. I don't really care if we have a check engine light because we don't have cat. So we're going to go ahead and throw these in and then get these on the car. Just bolted in the test pipes. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick start up and see how she sounds. Definitely super loud. I'm not gonna go ahead and connect the exhaust up just yet, just because we still have to throw in our welded diff, so um, it's a lot easier to do when the exhaust isn't there as it does slightly interfere with the diff going into place. So we'll get the diff in and then we'll go ahead and throw our exhaust on. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove our right rear hub so we can replace it because the wheel bearing in this one is bad and we're just gonna go ahead and replace it with a newer used one that's not um, completely worn out. So that should treat us well for this. So I don't know if you guys can hear this, but. Not what you want your wheel bearings to sound like. So now we've got the wheel bearing out and we can go ahead and throw our new one in. So what we have here is our new wheel bearing. This thing was $33 and it is a used OEM wheel bearing, but I thought this would be a better choice than getting one of those super cheap Chinese ones. So, and it was cheaper. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this thing on and then we'll be able to go ahead and throw our new axles in, which are right here, which were $140. So now we're just gonna go ahead and throw in our axles. So 
So I was messing around with some super cheap arms that I had had sitting around just to see if they would work for us. Turns out they were not gonna work, so we had to go with the arms that we purchased. So now we're gonna go ahead and install our rear adjustable arms. These are gonna be super important because the car did come on coilovers, but um, with the factory like uh, eccentric bolts, you can't really adjust camber to that great of a degree. So the car had at least negative five or 10 degrees of negative camber in the back, and it was, it would have been terrible for drifting. It would have given us terrible tire wear. So um, we got some cheap arms. They should be great for us. We're gonna go ahead and open them up and then throw them on. So what we have here are our new adjustable arms. These are gonna replace our spring buckets, um, which we have a true coil over in the rear of the car, so that is going to no longer be necessary. And these are going to allow us to adjust camber. Um, the combination of these is gonna allow us to get rid of the camber gain that um, results from having the coilovers and lowering the car, as well as correcting the um, tow you get when you are adjusting the camber in the car. So this should let us dial in everything in terms of the camber and tow, and these were $200. So it did just start raining, but we did get the arms installed. We've got the new tow and camber arms installed on both sides. And uh, once we throw the wheels on and everything, we will be able to get the car all lined up, um, driving on the road straight with our coilovers, so. This is gonna allow us to get really good tire wear while we're drifting and be able to just dial in the alignment exactly how we want it. So what we have here is our newly welded diff. So this car did come with an LSD. However, the LSDs on these cars are not that aggressive and will give you a lot of trouble when you're drifting, um, especially when you're learning how to drift and there's really no benefit to it, especially since this thing's gonna be only a drift car. It's not gonna be a street car in any capacity. Um, definitely a welded diff was the best option for us. I did wanna get an open diff and weld that and sell the VLSD, however, um, couldn't find an open diff and this kind of just seemed like the best option for us. So to get the diff welded, I just went onto a local drifting Facebook group and made a post asking if anyone um, wanted to weld the diff or knew someone that would weld it and there were a bunch of people that um, followed up with me. So I just had a guy that was pretty local to me weld it up. Um, I paid him $75 to weld this diff. He did pull it apart, which was awesome. Um, and it is tougher to weld these LSDs. However, um, there are a bunch of people that have had really good luck with it, so I was okay with doing it. So now we're just gonna go ahead and fill that up with fluid and throw it into the car. So we got the diff ready to go back up into the car. Now we've got the diff in, axles and drive shaft bolted up. So what we have here is our steering angle kit for the G35. This is a bolt-on offering from GK Tech. This was $259 and it's going to give us about 60 degrees of steering angle um, and we're not going to have to really do much besides bolt some small stuff on. So this kit's super straightforward. It is a bolt-on um, solution for steering angle. You essentially bolt this onto your front knuckle spindle piece. Um, this is, and it's got like a little tie rod extension. You've got a steering rack extension or space up here. Um, we've got one for both sides. And then we have two different sizes of this like tie rod extender just to make sure we can get the right one for our setup. So if you do get this kit, you can do some GK Tech controllers, which will help you get more steering angle and will overall improve the steering geometry of the car and drift. However, we're trying to keep this as budget as possible. And this kit does still work just fine without the aftermarket control arm. So I think it's gonna be perfect for us. So right now we're gonna go out to the car, take a look at how much steering angle we have stock, install the kit and see how much angle we can get. So this is what the car will look like with the stock level steering angle. You can see right here. And then with the trailing wheel, this is how much angle we're gonna get. So for the spacers, this small um, washer is gonna go on the driver's side and this bolt-on spacer is gonna go on the passenger side. As for the um, pieces that bolt up to the knuckle, these are gonna be a lot easier to install because um, we don't have to disassemble the inner tie rod area. So we're gonna start out by pulling off the these bolts um, where the tie rod meets the knuckle. Um, the outer tie rod from the inner tie rod as well as the inner tie rod from the steering rack. So as you can see, we've removed the inner tie rod from the rack. So now we have our tie rod tightened up. We have our zip ties and clamp holding our dust boot in place. We're gonna go ahead and install the bolt-on piece. Now looking at it, it does come with two different spacers. One's longer than the other. I'm assuming we're gonna use the shorter one just because we don't have any extended lower control arms or anything. And I'm assuming that's why you'd want the extra distance for the tie rod. So this thing does have some Ackerman adjustment here. However, we're just gonna leave that be. So at this control arm bolt unbolt, we're gonna go ahead and bolt these upper bolts in. 
So we got everything bolted up on the driver's side. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, install our other bolt-on rack spacer. Then we'll be able to recenter the steering rack, connect the tie rods, and do a rough alignment on the car. So now that we have the angle kit mostly installed, we have to recenter the steering rack before we reconnect our tie rods and do our alignment. Um, just because we no longer are gonna be in the middle of our rack where we used to be. So we just need to count the number of rotations of the wheel from lock to lock, and then we're gonna go halfway back through that, um, set a piece of tape on the steering wheel, and we can align the car to that, and then in some way we're gonna adjust the factory steering wheel to point that direction as straight. So we got our piece of tape denoting straight on the wheel, and now we're gonna go ahead and install our tie rods. We're just gonna go ahead and stick the tie rod into the tie rod end, and we're gonna do the same thing on both sides. After we install the angle kit, I was running out of steering angle because it was hitting this lock stop here, so I went ahead and removed the lock stop, and I noticed that the inner tie rod was actually making contact with the um, coilover mounting bolt. I imagine that in GK Tech's lower control arm, they have engineered it in a slightly different way, so this isn't a point of contact, and I assume that's why you can get more steering angle out of it. However, we're not gonna be running their control arm, so I just trimmed the lock stop down. So this um, piece makes contact with a lock stop right before the inner tie rod would make contact with the coilover mounting bolt, as this will give us a nice solid feel at lock. We're not gonna be like bending a bolt and not gonna be able to get our coilover off later. However, something else I noticed is that we're definitely not taking advantage of the entire um, length of the steering rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and just align the car with the steering wheel straight because we're not running out of lock um, with the steering rack on either side. So centering the rack doesn't really matter as it turns out. So. I guess that's good. I wish we were getting a little bit more lock, but I can see why it's physically impossible to get more steering angle. So if you guys can see here, this is the point of contact that makes contact with the coilover. So when we get the steering lock to the left, you can see it makes contact or just barely makes contact with the um, mounting bolt because of how we have cut the lock stop. So nothing we can really do about that. So we're just gonna work with what we got, get the steering wheel straight, do this to the other side, and we should be all set with the angle kit, and then we're just gonna give it a rough line. So this is what the car is looking like after installing the angle kit. This is how much lock we're getting on our leading wheel. And then this is how much lock we are getting on our trailing wheel. So I think all in all, it's definitely a lot better than stock. And with the amount of power we're making, this should be decent, especially on like a starter drift car. You don't need the, a ton of angle. And then down the road, if we did want to get some more angle out of the car, we could get the GK Tech lower control arms and we'd be all set um, on our front steering angle kit for I think about 60 degrees of steering lock. I'd say right now we're probably getting 50, 45 to 50 degrees. It's hard to say. I don't have my protractor out here to check, so we'll have to just go with the eyeball. So on this episode, we were able to get a ton of stuff done on the car. We were able to replace our axles, our wheel bearing, as well as our power steering pump. We were also able to install our cat deletes and our welded diff. We were also able to install our adjustable rear suspension arms. So we'll be able to dial in camber and tow um, on the car. Cause of course when we got it, it just had some coilovers and we had no adjustability and there was maybe negative five degrees of camber in the rear, which was not ideal for drifting and tire wear. We were also able to install our GK tech steering angle kit, which is super awesome and will give us plenty of angle for this car, especially with a beginning drift car, as well as giving us the ability to upgrade down the road if we saw fit. In the next episode, we're going to be installing a bucket seat, figuring out the rest of the interior of the car, making sure the handbrake can lock up the rear tires, which is really important for drifting, as well as dialing in the exterior of the car, the look of it, as well as looking for some new wheels for the car.